Can you remember where you were last April? Do you remember where some of you might have taken your children on holiday during the Easter break? Well, this is where I went. Hell on earth, or as my dad called it, a beach holiday with no sea. <laughs> I ran an ultramarathon in the Sahara Desert. So if you think running a normal marathon is hard, try running 250 kilometers. If you think running for a day is hard, well, it's six. If you think running with a backpack is hard, try running with 10 kilos. That basically sums up my holiday, and I absolutely loved it. I ran an ultramarathon in the Sahara Desert called the Marathon de Saab when I was only 16 and the youngest female competitor. So now, not only do you think I'm crazy, but it's worse than that. It was my crazy idea. The idea popped into my head when I was around 14 and my dad's personal trainer, Mad Dog Mike, died. Mad Dog Mike helped my dad turn his life around when he was told he wouldn't live past the age of 40. He got him into ultra running. My dad accepted to do it with me as he had run it before, trained by Mad Dog Mike. He knew exactly what he was getting into, but the rest of my family thought I was absolutely insane. But I didn't let that stop me, and that's what I'm here to tell you about. My dad helped me train physically, which is, which is extremely important, in a very short space of time, six months compared to the two years the female winner trained for. This entailed running a marathon every weekend for five weeks and doing some heat training. We turned on all the heaters in the living room and did some exercises to strengthen our backs for the weight of the backpacks. We also did what my dad called the other extreme. We trained in the snow because it was like climbing up sand dunes, and when it was stormy, which happened occasionally, it was like being in a sandstorm. Training was extremely hard for me. I was only 16, I had the normal life of a teenager, and I still had to go to school. I also had never run a marathon before, so we really needed to do some mental training. You might ask yourself what it means to train mentally. Well, it means to cry for practically the whole time during your first marathon, but still wanting to go back a week later and, and crying just a little bit less. When you get to the Marathon de Saab, you suddenly realize that any amount of physical preparation just isn't enough, even though I was extremely grateful my dad forced me to train. We really needed that mental strength, which is what got us through the dark moments. This run is just a little further than the drive from Monaco to Marseille, 20 kilometers more, and it's in the desert. It's 250 kilometers over in stages over six days. You have one long day over days four and five where you have to complete between 80 and 100 kilometers in 35 hours. After that, you still have another marathon of 42.2 kilometers to run and then another 10K. When you get to the desert, you're given this hand-drawn map that's supposed to guide you through all the sand dunes and jebels, which are the mountains in Morocco. And you're told you should probably follow these bright pink spray-painted bushes through the desert to get to the finish line every night. Every night, we would cross the finish line, we would get to our tent, which we now called home, and we would try and cook our disgusting freeze-dried food in the heat of the sand. In the desert, it's not just flat sand and rocks, as you may imagine it to be. It's also mountains, sand dunes, rope climbs, and sometimes the sand dunes can be the size of three-story buildings. After about three days, my legs kind of started to feel a bit tired when we'd done around 90 kilometers. And I ended up with a blister on my left foot the size of a golf ball, which my dad had told me I had to pop myself in order to avoid infection. 
I couldn't do it because the skin over my blister was so thick, so I had to go and see what they call Doc Trotters, who are the doctors who follow us throughout the race. But he turned out to be a dentist, got out a, a scalpel and sliced my blister open. It was hideous. <laughs> The long day took us 27 hours to complete 90 kilometers, and it was the longest day of my life. I had my dad next to me all the time telling me his stupid jokes over and over again. <laughs> I was trying to search for these bright pink spray-painted bushes, and then when it got dark, these glow sticks that they placed on the bushes that local children moved around anyway. It got so bad at one point that I sort of planned the assassination of the organizers with my spork, which is a spoon with the spikes of a fork, because I thought it might make them suffer like we had. The helicopters also kept blowing sand in our mouths all the time, and they kind of got on my nerves, so I decided I might just go and sneak out in the night to mess with their electrics. There were good parts, though, during the Marathon de Sable. There were people who we met and crossed paths with who I don't think I would have ever met otherwise. They helped make the distances shorter with their jokes and the chat, and just meeting these people was amazing. My dad and his stupid jokes, his singing competitions of the same two songs, Highway to Hell and Hotel California, which I now can't bear to listen to, <laughs> It helped me through the desert and created an extremely strong bond between us. I also took one piece of technology with me to the desert, my iPod. I saved the battery of my iPod for the long day so that my two favorite bands, Modern Baseball and the 1975, could help me get through the darkest moments of the long day. There was also beauty in the challenge, like the moment we got to checkpoint five of the long day, and there were these deck chairs, a bonfire, as if we needed a bonfire, and mint tea waiting for us. There was also the moment during the long day when I got really tired, I was crying, my feet were hurting so much, and all of a sudden, my dad freezes. He just stops, points at something, says, Emily, look over there. I stop, I look, but I can't see anything because I'm crying so much and my, eye, my vision went blurry. And then I kind of make out this huge, incredible, two-meter-long snake in front of us that just appeared out of nowhere. And this Danish guy walks past us and points at it and goes, a snake, and walks straight into its path. These incredible moments are really what kept me going during the Marathon de Saab. We also raised money for charity, a charity called Diabetes UK, which we've been involved with since my sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. We raised £23,500 for a new microscope that researchers needed to diagnose kidney disease. I really didn't want to let the people who donated so much money down, so that really kept me going. There was there were also people who told me I couldn't finish before I left, who told me that, who, who even bet on me not finishing. So I really wanted to prove to them that I could finish. I even started doubting myself after these people told me I couldn't finish. And so I really learned during the Marathon de Saab that I could achieve anything, and I proved to myself that I could finish this race. I'm not the first to tell you that life's a marathon and you can do anything. It is about challenging yourself and leaving your comfort or your safety zone. But I also came here to tell you that I had the best holiday ever and the best experience I've had so far. I'm not the youngest female competitor, I'm the second, and people told me I couldn't finish. But if you really set your mind on something and you have the determination to do it, you can finish. I know I've changed and I've learned something. I'm not really sure what it is yet because it still feels completely surreal, but I had the best experience. My dad said to me 
on the long day, when we were both crying, and yes, he was crying, that he would never wish so much pain on his daughters, but since it was my idea, and I showed the determination to do it, he was okay with it. So if one day your kids come up to you with a crazy idea like mine, I think you should encourage them. Thank you.